Pop-up menus are the easiest method for creating a many-to-one link, such as we have for customers and products on the invoices layout. This pop-up right here, and this one as well. And you notice I've added a few extra products here to prove my point on um, why you might need to have, rather than just a simple pop-up menu, you might want a picker. But let's first go into Manage Database. And you'll see here's our many to one right here. You can see the menu right here and the one right here. And then from lines to products is another many to one. So the problem with pop-up menus is that when your list gets longer, it can be cumbersome. Of course, you can come in here and pop up and type in what you want, like an A for Apple or an I for iBook or an IM to go to iMac. And you can usually type, you know, two or three letters in a second. That's about how much time you have for type ahead. And then you can use the enter key, and it's completely keyboard driven if you want. And it's not too difficult, but a lot of people like better filtering capabilities, a little bit more time, a little bit easier time selecting what they want. And that's what a picker is for. So we're going to create one. We're going to go into layout mode. And we're going to borrow a layout from a reminders form. We'll duplicate this layout. And we'll call this customers. That's usually the first thing I do so I don't get confused on which layout I'm on. We'll go to layout setup. Change it to customers. And then type in customers underscore picker. And we'll get rid of a few things that we don't need, such as we only need one filter here. We'll make it bigger. It's going to be a filter on a global field. And we don't need all these extra fields right here. And we'll start by double-clicking on this one, going home, change it to our customers. Whoops, didn't quite get to home. There we go. And we have our name company. We're going to do both the name and the company. So we're going to choose name last first and then come back up to customers and then just choose company there's some conditional formatting on here so I'll remove that and double click on this one go home here and I'm gonna put in the city field here as well or something else to identify. The city is a little bit more complex because there's multiple addresses. So we could choose cities or addresses and then choose a city. Just another way to identify what record we're looking at. And we don't quite need this much room, so we'll make that a bit smaller, that a bit smaller, move that over like that, move that one over, get this one over just right there. Make it look nice. Doesn't need to be that much space. There we go. Probably move this over a little bit. And it probably doesn't need to be quite this big. I probably made it too big. Take off that formatting for the for that uh, date field. And then make ourselves a new global field. I'll make it X customers. Text field. Go into options. Make it a global storage field double click on this home go down to the bottom there's X customers and there is a a field here that we're using as a script trigger and we're just going to leave it there for right now because we're going to make ourselves a new script and let's see if we can make this probably doesn't need to be quite this big let's make it a little bit bigger so the city has some more room That looks the same, make that a little bit bigger, that should be good enough. We can always change it later if we need to. So we'll go into our script, and we'll make ourselves customers picker. And that's going to have our standard perform script, allow user abort, which is right there, set our capture. And then what we'll do is, the first thing we're going to do is initialize that global field. X customers. We want it to be blank when we go there. So we'll put in quote, quote here just to initialize it. 
new window. That'll be our card type window. I really like the card windows. I use them all the time because you can have a, a layout within a layout essentially. It, it, they move together. It, it's better than trying to make a dialogue with another window because then they're independent. I like them to be together like that. And all the way to the bottom, we haven't saved yet, so it's still got reminders for and copy. Put a zero here like we normally do, so it's right at the top. Take the close off. We do want the dim. I'm going to then show all records. I'm going to go to the first record. Just so we're at the very top of the list, right to begin with. And really, that's all we need at this point. We don't need much else at all. This is just our initial display. So we'll call it Customers Picker Display. I think that's all we'll need. Oh, we'll want, want one more thing. Go to Field. Just to make it nice so we have that field selected. Go to that X Customers field. Just to get in there. That'll make it easy so I can start filtering right away. And we can't forget, let's double check what this does. Close window, that's exactly what we want. We'll put in filter. And command or control double click. And select our new script right there. So let's test out that first part. Should, should be pretty easy, should work pretty well. Go back to invoices. Get ourselves a nice little button here. And let's see what we have for a picker. Let's put a little pencil there, I think, or something like that. I think we used the pencil before. Could put a picture of a customer here. That's probably the best thing here. I think there's a picture of a customer in here somewhere. There we go. I like that one. Perform the script. All the way to the bottom. And let's see if that first part works, because we still haven't put the filter and We've just got displaying it, right? It's not quite big enough, so we got to fix that. The close button does work, so that's great. Come in here, make this probably fairly big, so I'm going to make it 600. Try that again. That looks pretty good. You can scroll up and down. And what we're going to do is put a button right over here, so you don't have to have a button actually there. You can just have a button you click on the whole thing that selects it. So hit quit on there. And this is going to be very similar to what we did on the list view filter. So customers, picker, filter. Come back here, grab these two scripts, copy them, paste them in there. And we're going to enter find mode. Set field. We'll set our Customers, name last first, name first last, doesn't matter which one. Two, what's in our X customers. There we go. Then do the same thing for our company. And then don't forget, you want to find only active people. So the active has to be a one here. Perform the find. And that's all we need to do. We're just going to leave it like we did, leave it essentially blank uh, if there's no, you know, no records found. We'll just, you know, they can delete it and remove it. So we'll save that. Come over to our customer's picker layout. Command double click. Not the display on that one. I made a mistake. It's going to be the filter. There we go. And let's see how it works. It might not work perfectly. We'll give it a try. We might as well, we're here, manage the layouts and put this up there. Switch back to invoices. Hit the picker. Oh, and we forgot one thing. We forgot to put the actual button in there. So let's put that in there before we forget. Customers. Picker. Select. 
we won't need any perform scripts of allow user board and set error capture because it's going to happen so fast. There's really no way somebody can, you know, cause a problem here. It's just going to be a simple set field with a closed window. Close window. Put that second. There we go. Set field. This is going to now be an invoices. Set the KF customer ID to. Well, I'm actually, we're going to need one more step. We're going to set it to dollar sign ID. So that's going to come up here. Set variable dollar sign ID to our customers. That'll be set to the KP customers ID. Save that. Come back to our reminders form that we, well, it's actually our customer's picker now. Put a nice little button there. I'm going to get the button tool, draw a button in there. Not any particular size right now. Add the script. The select script. There we go. Make it fill up this entire body part here. And let's see what the height of this is. This is 27 high, so we'll do the same thing here, 27. There, it's right in the middle. You saw those highlight there. As far as the width, it's 630 wide, so it's not quite wide enough. I want to fill up the entire thing so when I highlight it, it looks nice. Then we'll go to our appearance. We don't need any of this stuff here. None. None. Outer shadow, take this off, go through these as we have to do every time to remove all the stuff. We don't need any highlight. Well, we might want to have hover. It's possible we want to hover, but I'm going to take all of them off. Pressed in focus, there we go. Did I get pressed? Oh, didn't get that one. There we go. Okay, and then just probably send it to the back and lock it. Okay, let's see how that works out. Invoices form again. Hit that. And let's just, be, without using the filter, let's try. You see the cursor's up there, but let's try Lily Moran. It looks like that's the one that went in there. We can check it by going over here. Yep, Lily Moran went right in there. So perfect. So let's try the filter here. Try O. And didn't quite work. Let's see what happened here. The O didn't work, so why didn't that work? That should have worked for Osborne. Let's try it one more time with something else. Let's try an A in there. Did work for the A. Thought we had Osborne in here. Let's go and check out our customers. There's Osborne right there. Maybe I chose the wrong field. Name last first. Name, yeah, it looks good right there. Should have worked on that. Try it one more time just to make sure here. Put an O in there. Oh, I think I put a zero. No, didn't do that. Let's try a D in there. Doesn't seem to be working for that at all. It's working for the A here. I'm not sure what the problem is. Let's see what our script has if I got the wrong field in there. The filter is right there. Name last first. Name company. Ah. Here's the problem. We need to put in a new request here. Oops, not new window. Let's try that again. And then duplicate this right there. So it's finding on either this or this. And that should solve the problem here. Let's try it again. Type in the O. Good. S. Oops. Now we want to put that curse, that field, that it back in there. It looks like I have two John Osborns in there. Should probably fix that. Let's see. So let's go in here and fix a couple of things. So perform the find, and then right after that, go to field. That'll be our in our customers. X customers. That should solve that problem. There we go. And then let's go quickly over to here. I didn't know I'd put two John Osborns in here. There's the first one. Oh, there's three of them in here. Well, we don't really need three of them, so I'm going to get rid of them. There we go. Just so we don't get confused. Try that again. O, S. 
Now, why didn't OS work? O works. Let's see, did I accidentally delete the other one? There's John Mark Osborne. Well, always some problems when you do this stuff, right? So let's go back in here, take a look at that. New request has to be active, perform fine. Let's turn on the script debugger and see what happens here. So we'll turn on the script debugger here. Type in the O. Walk through it here. Puts the O in there. Puts the active. New request. Puts the O in there. Active. Perform the find. But it doesn't find Osborne for some reason. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and do the find manually here and see what happens. Does find it that way, so we've got something interesting going on here. Let's see. Going to go over and check just to make sure in customers that name last first is a text result. It is. Let's go over and make sure we got the right fields on the layout. Actually, it might be the wrong. I think we've got the right fields on there. We'll double check it. Uh, there we go. That's from customers. And let's see here. Customers, company, customer's name, last first. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's take out this part and see what happens. Run it again. Hit that button. Type in the O. It's just not finding it. Let's see what we've got here. We've got B. Let's try B. Let's see got the birds, got all those. What if there's something wrong with the index on this? Let's take a look at customers here. And one way to fix the, the index is to come in here none and do not turn it on. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Come back in here. This is going to rebuild the index if there's something wrong with it. So I'm glad this happened because we can see what might be an issue here. So come back into storage options. Automatically turn them on. Click OK. Click OK. Let's try it again and see what happens. And it's just not finding it. What is wrong with that? There's something going on here. Do I have the correct field on there? On the got X customers here. Then we have X customers here. Ah, oh, maybe I'm not active. Maybe I took myself off of being active. Didn't think about that. Ah, not active. Well there you go. Sometimes the data will mess you up. But we got to cover a few ways to troubleshoot. This should fix the problem. O, S, there we go. Choose Osborne John, and it goes right in there. So there's a picker for you. You can see how it can be very useful, very handy, as far as putting information in there. One thing I didn't do was an erase button here. But I don't think people are going to be doing that much. But if you want to, we did that erase button over here on the list view. Same idea. Once you get something in there. See how that erase button appears? We can use that. Same idea. So no worries on that. So there's your picker, your first picker. We're also going to do a picker on the products here. It's a little more complicated because there will be two fields in this one. But not much more complicated. But I want to do another one because they're so important. Pickers are, are one of the things I use all the time.